Hi, this is Jean again, and I'm giving you the last installment on my 365 days of stitching. And I'm so excited because I did it. <laughs> so you've seen some of these in the earlier um, uh, reels that we've shown, and I thought I would share what I did at the very end. So as you know, I started last year, well, I actually started December 20, and I ended on December 20 this year. So I'm gonna go back to the beginning. And what I used for this challenge was flannel. So I have five inch wide piece of flannel that I cut. And then I laid out my scraps of fabrics and some are more organized areas and some are less organized. Um, and then I did stitching and I didn't turn under edges very often. Once in a while I did, but most of the time I just top stitched everything down. So here we are in the very beginning and I, um, you know, the piece of flannel went to here. So I started with a piece of flannel that large and I ended up doing three of these. So this is 120 inches long. And I just started out overlapping and I found in the very beginning, I was kind of fussing about where I was putting things. And the more I did, the more comfortable I got and one idea would kind of lead to another. And I think that rhythm of being involved in something like this is really valuable to all of us as creators. And I think that's what I have loved so much about this. Um, and the beginning, I was just going to use the goldish color and the blues and the creams and whites. Then, most of you know that this green is my very favorite color. So you can see, I let a little green show up. And I remember the day I thought about the green, we had gone on a walk um, out at Black Butte Ranch across the meadow and the um, trees, the um, willow trees, which I just love willow trees, they were starting to shoot up green shoots and I was so excited. And that day I picked up this little stick. It was kind of on the side of the trail where they had put bark chips and there was this little bigger stick. So I brought it home and I thought, I'm gonna put it on my stitchy. <laughs> so I know exactly where I was when I created this part. I came right home and did it. And I also added a touch of magenta because I started seeing this pinkish red color coming out on those willows too. So here we go. Um, you can see my palette has, um, there's more to it now. It's a little perkier. Um, and I was cleaning up the studio and happened on my grandmother's button jar. So here's a bunch of grandma's buttons. And my grandma was an amazing seamstress. So I'm very excited to have her buttons on here. Um, and you can see I added kind of a dimensional little piece and I call these quiltlets. This was some leftover pieced fabric I had and I put it on a backing, stitched around on the machine, slit the back and turned it and pressed it. And I call these quiltlets, but they're actually just a little baby quilt. So it's a quiltlet. So if you've never done that, they're really fun. And I sometimes um, make these, um, well, I always have some made up and like say a friend has been sick or something, I send her a card, I'll throw a quiltlet in. And this year at, at Christmas time, I uh, did some quiltlets and people's cards. So, you know, I'm just going along and I get really anxious for um, spring 
And finally, it's starting to feel like I can get outside and clean up my flower beds. And during the winter, I do think about how I want the garden to be my, I have an area of raised beds where I plant seeds. Um, and I had a bunch of old flower seeds and I thought, you know, these are three and four years old, some of them, but I want to see if they'll germinate. So I just tossed them all in a bowl. And when I planted them, it took a long time for them to germinate. But by August, I just had this glorious garden of every color. And so <laughs> this was what I was thinking about when I was playing around with those seeds in the early spring. But once gardening gets here, I didn't have as much stitching time. So I'm gonna be really honest with you. I didn't sti stitch for about three months. This was just sitting there and I would fuss around with the greens. You know, I had it all kind of laid out. I hadn't basted it down or anything. And so finally, towards the end of August, I started stitching on this. So I did have a bit of a pause, but it was going on during that whole time. And I think, you know, we have thinking time too, where we need to kind of decide what we want to do. We aren't, don't have a needle in our hands every single minute. So through the fall, this took a long time to stitch. And then I had an opportunity to go to Morocco again with uh, Valerie and Kelly um, Sheets on their creatives tour. So I decided the rest of my piece was all gonna be about Bali. And Marion Shimoda was one of our um, people and she made us all these little wire hearts and there's a little tiny button in there. So I put that heart and Val uh, block printed all of these fabrics and she gave us um, for our creative uh, exercises uh, squares of fabrics, five inch squares of fabrics. And so I cut a lot up and played around with them. And then you can see the stitching I did. And when we were there, um, we got to go out into the desert and rode camels and I did it. <laughs> I'm really proud of myself. Uh, so I had to put some camels on here and it was looking kind of boring. So I put some magenta at the bottom of my camels. But when I got home and it was the 20th of December and I was done with this, but I, and I had some straggly threads, so I cleaned everything up, pressed, and I decided I really wanted to put a story on the back. And so what I did was took some muslin and put wonder under on the back of it. And then I have a rotary blade that looks like pinking shears. So I cut out, you know, a square. And then I wanted it to be my handwriting on the back. And I just talked about what was going on maybe during that time. Or in the beginning, I, I talked about it, them being five, this being five inches wide and using the flannel. Um, but this way I have a story and you can see some places it's a smaller story, <laughs> some places it's larger. And I really kind of like seeing all of this thread on the back. And someone said to me, oh, well, you can cover that up. And I said, I don't want to, <laughs> I really like seeing it. So, um, and I've also had people say, well, what are you going to do with this? And I said, I'm just enjoying that I had this experience. And, you know, you certainly could do other things with it. Um, my sister said, well, you could put it above your windows in the studio. And, you know, I might do that sometime, but right now I just like pulling it apart and looking at it some days. So I thought I'd show you where my idea came from. And it came from this book and Annette just ordered a bunch of them. It's a Fragmentation by Shelley Rhodes and she's from the UK. 
and I love her work. And she wrote it during COVID, and there's all kinds of little experiments in it. And this was the one that got me started doing mine, was she did a long piece. And the nice thing about a long piece is, you know, I would just roll it up as I went and then just add more flannel and roll it up some more, but it was really portable. But here you can see some individual pieces that she did. And this year, I think I'm gonna do some individual pieces because I still have scraps. <laughs> and I've had people say to me, well, you sure have a lot of little scraps, but my fabric becomes kind of precious to me sometimes. And if I really like it, I have a pretty box and I'll just throw pieces in there and then I purge in it every once in a while. But in this book, there are all kinds of things that you can do. So anyway, I love this book. Then there are a couple other books that I like. And this one is Slow Stitch and it's by Claire um, Wellesley Smith. And it came out a few years ago but there's a part I like in here about walking because I, I really love taking walks and I find there's a real rhythm that you get into when you're out on a walk. And I think mentally your mind gets into a rhythm of once I kind of see something interesting and maybe snap a picture of it, I find myself then looking for something else and something else. And, you know, things just kind of feed off of each other. But I really like um, this walking as a practice story. So I thought I would share that with you. And she has all kinds of projects in here too, um, similar to, you know, what the other book is. But it's all, you know, stitching on older pieces of fabrics or new things but just stitching. And I keep my stitches pretty simple. I find that if I have to get a book out to look at how to do a stitch, I kind of lose my mojo. You know, there's a rhythm that I feel just stitching. And I find if I make myself start stitching a line, invariably, then as I stitch, I'll think, oh, I could do this over here or over here. Now, Cass Holmes is another of my favorite people from the UK. And um, we invited her to come here before COVID, but COVID happened and her husband's been really ill. So we are not sure if she's gonna be able to come or not, but we are really hoping she will sometime. But I thought you could see this little travel um, book that she made and it folds out and it reminds me of my little book. So if you were gonna go someplace on a trip, you know, maybe you take a little baggie of fabrics or something. And you know, if you're inspired one day, you cut out some little pieces and just stitch. So lots of things that you can do with stitching. Um, I also thought I'd share with you my thread. I love uh, 14 weight thread and I can use it in the sewing machine or, you know, I can use it for my stitching. Um, you know, I also like size eight cotton pearl, um, but it's a, a little thicker thread. And there's something about this um, and the way it works on this size of a piece you know, the scale, the five inches wide, seems to work really well. So I used a lot of that. And, you know, if I was going someplace, I just had my thread and my needles and some little clippers and I was ready to go. So maybe you'll do a stitching project this year. <laughs>